Hey, what's going on, guys? Kalamaza here. This is going to be my patch 10.2 Season 3 Amir Jasil Demonology Warlock DPS Guide. In it, we're going to be covering talents, uh, builds, rotations, uh, and basically everything you need to know to play a, de a Demonology Warlock heading into patch 10.2 Season 3 and Amir Jasil. Now, if there's any weak auras or add-ons seen in the video, links to Twitch and Discord down below if you guys want any of them, but they're all for free for you guys. Uh, and also, before we get too far into it, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for all support on Patreon. Like always, thank you a million times, guys. Uh, if you're looking at supporting on Patreon, should be a link up here as well as down below in the video description. And let's get right on into it. Demonology's tier bonus in patch 10.2 revolves around demonic cores, basically instant cast demon bolts, and doom brands. Consuming a demonic core, a demonic core is going to be an instant cast demon bolt, like this proc right here, applies a doom brand to your target, dealing damage when the doom brand expires, basically uh, more in AoE, less in single target. Casting Hand of Gul'dan, I guess Hand of Gul'dan being cast on the target or even splash damage reduces the cooldown, or I guess the duration of doom brand, by one second per soul shard spent. So sort of a way to like quickly reduce the cooldown on what is baseline a 20 second buff in Doom Brand. When Doom Brand expires with your four piece, you have a chance to summon a Doom Fiend, which is a Doom Guard, that will either cast Doom Bolt Botleys in AoE or a basically a single target Doom Bolt, uh, which does more damage in single target versus AoE. Now currently the two piece is better than the four piece in AoE, uh, tuning that way your rat's gonna go. But the interesting thing with Demos tier bonus, is that there's you have to micromanage multiple doom brand applications at once so when it comes to single target we'll just open up here for a little bit basically you, you have an instant cast demon bolt uh demonic core is what it's called you can cast it there's the doom brand i'll cast handy gold and it will reduce the duration from 17 to 14 basically that's that you just keep you know casting normal spells whatever what have you uh sort of keeping an eye on your doom brand not overspending demonic cores so i can reapply it basically here whenever i'm in combat when it comes to AOE, trash packs, and Mythic Plus, all that kind of stuff, that's where Doom Brand's application and I guess juggling becomes more of an issue. So let's say we're in Mythic Plus, we're heading into the trash pack. I should get some cores here, a siphon there. You have to literally juggle multiple Doom Brands. So let's say I, I Doom Bolt one mob here and I bolt it again. It won't spread. There's no dual applications. I have to literally Doom Brand different mobs and then I cast Handy Wool then on one, it'll reduce them all. It leads to a very large amount of micromanagement when it comes to Mythic Plus. It's basically like hyper watching dots for affliction because you're having multiple, uh, you know, demonic core casts and hand to lands quite often. And plus, there's a Doom Guard proc as well. But trying to weave in implosions, dog casts, other cooldown stuff, it's actually very tedious. Hopefully, this changes before the patch goes live. I'm not sure. At this current point in time, it's a, it's a week before BlizzCon. I have to record the videos now. If it changes, I'll update it in the comment section. But if not, that's the bonus in AOE, and uh, hopefully you enjoy spinning templates at once. Now, when it comes to Demonology Warlock talents in patch 10.2, there are basically three builds that are competitive right now that we'll talk about here. One being single target based, more of a raiding kind of build. One being single target, but cleave based, the Immutable Hatred Cleave build. And the third being the M plus guillotine build. Every build has some points you can change a little bit to tweak and tune what you want, depending on the setting that you're in, but they're all pretty competitive and are all also pretty similar in basically every setting. The first build here is going to be IHST. This is Immutable Hatred single target build. It's similar to Demo of the Past, that you're playing Grand Warlock's design as your baseline capstone here in your Tyrant Row over Ring of Tyranny. This was changed in patch 10.2 to be a baseline 30 second cooldown reduction on Tyrant. There's no longer this per shard spent thing, which was actually like a minute eight, minute 10 on Tyrant cooldown wise. It is baseline one minute now every time. This is a buff to Grand Warlock's design in 10.2 and it feels pretty good overall as Demonology. Now, besides that, you're playing one point in Sack Souls here, increasing Shadow Bolt, Demon Bolt damage. You're playing Expendables. You're playing Entoran Armaments, increasing Felgar damage. The same things for the most part you've played, well, for the majority of Shadowlands or Dragonflight. Jeez. Uh, Infernal Command, increasing Felgar damage. And the other capstone here is going to be Immutable Hatred. This was also redesigned in Patch 10 too. Whenever you consume a Demonic Core, your, your Felgar does damage. This is a sort of a theme with the tier set, with this talent here called Spiteful Reconstitution. Also, consuming a Demonic Core gives you a one in four chance from what I've heard to summon a Wild Imp. Also, just a baseline implosion damage increase. But this build here has a very strong one minute damage profile. You Tyrant every minute. Tyrant sinks with uh, Demonic Strength here. You have Vile Fiend being 
45 seconds, but you hold it for every Tyrant. You have this increasing Bioping damage. You have uh, Grimoire being two minutes. Every other Tyrant has a Grimoire in it, basically, now. Imperator was changed. This patch to now be a 15% increase to crit rate damage, or sorry, chance on your Imps from 10% in patch 10-1, and it is now a, now a one-ranked talent, which makes it very, very strong. Outside of that, you're still playing things like Fell Sunder, still playing Shadow's Bite and Single Target, still playing Siphon, still playing Inner Demons, and besides that, I mean, Dread Calling, everything else is pretty much the same. This is going to be a much more consistent damage profile than you're used to in 10.15 when you're playing Portal and Pit Lord. This build basically just has a Tyrant every minute, your Vile Fiend does damage, your, your damage does spike a bit with Tyrant every minute, but it is a much more... You sustain a lot more damage outside cooldowns. When you have them, you climb a bit, but you're not doing 800k during cooldowns and, and then less than tank damage outside of them. You're doing a respectable, sustainable amount of damage. Uh, when it comes to Portal, very briefly, this row is not competitive at all right now. If it's buffed, I'll talk about it. I'll put a link down below in the comment section or probably description, one of the two, I don't know. If the bill gets buffed or if it's a uh, if it's like a competitive portal build out there, but currently uh, there is not. And this is going to be your best bet in single target when it comes to demo lock, and any kind of patchwork or single target based setting. Now, if you're looking for more of a single target, but cleave based build with some AOE elements in it, this is likely where I go. It is not a large shift from the build we just played. You're all, you're basically just moving Shadows Bite over to Implosion here, and you're moving this point here from Sack Souls up into Dreadlash, still maintaining Imperator as a talent. Now, there are nine points spent down here in the 10 point capstone row. I have simmed Imperator versus Sack Souls. Sack Souls is ahead by about 200 DPS, but you're imploding with this build and the sim, you're not really imploding. So I, I, I think Imperator is a very strong single target talent in a cleave based build. Yes, you're imploding imps, so you lose value both in Imperator and Sack Souls, but I feel like overall Imperator is likely a little better than playing a point in Sack Souls. But there's a bit of a floater point here if you want it. Either way, this build very similar to Hatred build you know, rotationally, basically the same, but you have Implosion being able to implode Imps. You're also playing Dreadlash, or your dogs basically cleave when they run in and do damage and also have a chance with Carnivorous Stalkers to essentially Dread Bite again, doing additional damage and also reapplying Houndmaster Stratagem. Besides that, it's very similar to the single target build. You're going to cast Hand of Gul'dans and Dread Stalkers and Tyrants all the same. Now, when it comes to the Mythic Plus build, being the M plus Guillotine build, this build is also very similar to the Cleave build, but you change one or two talent points here. So I am currently playing Guillotine over Immutable Hatred, which I think is the play in Mythic Plus. And I am playing a point down here in Pact of the Imp Mother. Now, I think this point can go in one of a handful of places. Uh, likely Imperator, Shadow Invocation, or Pact of the Imp Mother. I enjoy Pact of the Imp Mother the most. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I feel like if you want a little more single target emphasis in Plus, you can play Imperator over this, but you are imploding in plus to a similar extent. If you want more like just passive sustained AOE, Shadow Invocation, a fine option. Keep in mind the bomber does indeed proc, even though you don't have it talented if you're playing demonic strength. But uh, Pact of the Ant Mother gives you a, basically a 10% chance per Hand of Gul'dan cast to cast a Hand of Gul'dan a second time for free. This means you get, you know, basically three imps, depending how many you actually cast in the previous hand, if it procs for free which does, in, in a sense, mean more single target damage as well as more AOE damage, depending where they proc and if you're imploding or not. Now, I've simmed them. They're all very close. Pact of the Ant Mother, from what I've seen in sim, has, has a higher high end, but also a tiny bit of a lower low end if you don't proc. It makes sense. RNG is RNG. I think it's an enjoyable talent. I've liked playing with it. And we're also not playing Imp Gang Boss anywhere, whether it's in the Guillotine build or in the Immutable Hatred Cleave build. This has also been changed in patch 10.2. It no longer refunds an Imp to you, if you implode an imp gang boss, it just increases their damage. Unfortunately, it's undertuned. You'd rather just play Spiteful Recon, Fell Sunder, and other talents instead of this one, but you know, it's the world we live in. Outside of that, we're just playing Guillotine for that short cooldown on AoE. Also fine in single target, you'll cast it there. With the change to Hatred, no longer giving you a damage decrease if you're cleaving it with Legion Strike, just being a baseline increase if you're casting Demonic Cores now, there's a chance you could play an Immutable Hatred build as well in M+. Like this, playing Hatred, which is basically the same thing as the Cleave build here, within reason, on Tyrannical Weeks, weeks where you want a little bit more single target emphasis. But for a general overall M plus build, I'd likely start here with Guillotine, Pact of the Ant Mother likely, and just the basic Cleave elements in Dreadlash, Carnivorous, Stratagem, Implosion, Spiteful, and all of that. Links to all the builds down below. All right, so when it comes to Demonology's single target opener playing the Immutable Hatred Grand Warlock's design build, we talked about it a minute ago right here. I put a actual spell tracker below my weaker warrior here if you want to 
a cast of spells I'm casting, but I'll talk about them as well. And there should be a visual on the screen here on the side also. Uh, we're gonna open up by waiting, making sure we have two imps out from inner demons here when they both are active. They will despawn from time to time, so wait for both of them to spawn, waiting for us to spawn again here. Whenever it does, we're gonna cast Power Siphon before combat, which gives us two sacks of demonic core. And we're going to go by precasting two shadow bolts, the five shards and the boss is pulled. We're gonna go Grimoire, Vile Fiend, cast Demon Bolt to apply Doom Brand and also get, you know, two shards back. Dreadstalkers, two Shadow Bolts, Hand of Gul'dan, typically all Demon Bolt here, Hand of Gul'dan, Hand of Gul'dan, Trinkets, Potions, whatever, Summon Demonic Tyrant, and then cast Hand of Gul'dan, Demonic Strength. Now, depending on refunds and things, if you get extra refunds in your opener, you're going to want to keep an eye on your Doom Brands. Doom Brand uptime is very important for Demonology because your tier bonus, you know, having Doom Brand active can spawn Doom Guards right here. Uh, besides that, you're casting three shard hand to Gul'dan's, making sure not to overspend that on demonic cores, and uh, just casting dogs on cooldown. Now, you're playing a one minute tyrant version of demonology here, so you're going to have Vile Fiend off cooldown right about now, but you're going to hold that for your tyrant in about 25 seconds here. Besides that, once again, three shard hand to Gul'dan's, basically just maintaining the normal rotation of demonology. Uh, you can power siphon basically on cooldown if you want to make sure you're you know mindful of demonic cores building into a new tyrant so right about now i'm going to siphon i'm going to start building into a new tyrant we have about 10 so it's off cooldown so i'm going to cast summon by fiend here then cast shadow bolt back to five shards we had a refund there cast dogs hand of gul'dan demon bolt hand of gul'dan demon bolt hand of gul'dan one final hand if there's like a shard left summon demonic tyrant hand of gul'dan Demonic Strength, and I'll bolt again, and once again, just maintain your usual cycling of Demonology. With three shard handy Gul'dan's, casting Call of Dreadstalkers on cooldown for the most part, outside of aligning for your Tyrant, and that's it. We can Siphon here as well, launch some bolts, quickly before our dogs are expiring, and that's the gist of it. Uh, you are playing Soul Conduit, you are playing Demonic Knowledge, so you do at times get shard refunds, at times you get Demonic Core refunds, which you don't expect from dogs or imps, so you have to learn how to play around that a bit and react to it. Now, outside of that, every other Tyrant will have a Grim War Felguard in it. It's a two-minute cooldown, comparatively to Tyrant being a one-minute cooldown. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, i got to watch that a little bit. But I'm going to bolt here because um, Brand's going to expire. But I know I have Tyrant at about 15 here. I have Dog expiring now, so I get cores from this. I'm going to Power Siphon back to four shards, cast a bolt. I'm going to go Grim War, Vile Fiend. Bolt again. we got a Dog proc. We can cast that there. Then go Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan, Trinkets, whatever you have, Summon Demonic Tyrant, Hand of Gul'dan, Demonic Strength. Now, Doombrand did fall here for a little bit. Uh, I would likely just, you know, change it up a little bit when it comes to rotational stuff. Once again, RNG is RNG. Have to play around your procs and things. Keep it all in mind. We can apply it now with that proc right here. But that's the core cycling of Demonology. You have one minute Tyrants. Every minute you're going to be cycling Tyrants or cycling Pets and building into that. And that gives you that sustainable one minute damage profile that demonology has been known for albeit we're not playing demonic consumption but it's still solid and well brings a good bit of damage in patch 10 too now when it comes to demonology and aoe in patch 10.2 it's very important to note imp gang boss has changed it no longer refunds imps if you implode imp gang bosses it just increases their damage we're not even playing imp gang boss from what i've seen in aoe it is not a very good talent anymore unfortunately so we are likely back to the implosion cycling that we did in shadowlands and before where you typically build six to nine imps then implode them before they start expiring you can track your imps in game by looking at your implosion button here it has a number on it or you can get a weak aura i have one right here this one will show the total number of active imps here being two i have one and two right here you can see them one and two with their energy their remaining cast and their remaining duration here so it's a good way to track and say hey my imps are expiring in x seconds i need to implode here before they expire now outside of that it's the same thing mostly when it comes to opening up an aoe with full cooldowns uh we are playing bio fiend here because it does do a lot of damage with fell invocation Let's say, for example, I'm heading into a trash pack, say I have a few demonic cores in the previous pack. Also keep in mind, you have to weave Doom Brands now, as Demonology, in M+. So I'm going to head into a pack. I'm going to cast Demon Bolt here on this, apply a Doom Brand, go Grim War, go Vile Fiend. Probably going to go here, apply a Doom Brand there as well, cast Red Stalkers. Might cast a couple of Shadow Bolts here to like five shards. I'm going to do a faster Tyrant here, probably just two hands, trinkets, potions, whatever, Tyrant. I'm going to cast Demonic Strength. And besides that, I'm going to watch my Imps here. Now, this weak aura currently on PTR is bugged. Cast your guillotine here as well. Uh, it is not displaying the extension of imps from your tyrant. It'll be fixed before it goes live, but it's not working right now. At this point, I'm going to implode. Tyrant's about to expire. Implode there. And outside of that, 
you're just cycling here. So we're going to basically get some cores here. The implosion rotation. We're going to build the five shards. We're going to cast Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan, Weaving Brands here as well. Imps, Implode. We had one Imp about to expire there. And that's the gist of the implosion rotation. Build the five shards. Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt. Implode. Nine imps roughly every time. You can do a little more at times, a bit less depending on what you're doing. Six to nine is a general number. Also making sure to tab target multiple Doom Brands around because, uh, well, who doesn't love spending plates? So we have Tyrant here again. We're going to cast Dogs, cast uh, Vile Fiend, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolts, Hand of Gul'dan. One final one here because why not we're Tyranting. Go on the Tyrant, cast Demonic Strength, and continue cycling hands. Once again, keep in mind this is bugged. These are actually all extended. You can see them here not expiring. Just, you know, it's bugged right now. Uh, putting down my guillotine on cooldown basically and going to implode here. I'm going to cast dogs to apply how much a stratagem and then implode here. It's important to note that if you can indeed cast dread stalkers or have up this debuff, which is how much a stratagem that you get that from whenever you cast dogs by a dread lash and carnivorous and all this, it will indeed increase the damage your implosion does. If it's not up and you can't cast dogs for imps are expiring, you can still implode. But if it's possible to have it up or you can cast dread stalkers, all that, that's what you want to do. And once again, the implosion rotation, for those that didn't see it one more time, basically, when you're looking at AoE, outside of casting dogs and things, you build the five shards, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt at six imps, Hand of Gul'dan, one final bolt if you have it, if not, one GCD, and you can implode. And there you go. That was nine-ish imps, actually a little more because I had an actual packed proc, but once they're give or take six to nine imps, you implode. Cycle it, cycle it again while weaving in, you know, Grimoire cast, Vialphine cast, Dog cast, if you're, or if you're building into a Tyrant, and making sure to micromanage and babysit your Doom Brands because they can spawn Doom Guards, which do a good bit of your damage as well. Yeah, that wraps it up. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, answer any questions you might have had about Demonology Warlock heading into patch 10.2, Amir Distill, and eventually season, well, I guess eventually M plus season three stuff. Uh, I think Demonology is in a pretty decent spot heading into 10 too. It's likely one, one of probably the best spec out of uh, all Warlock specs. And in, in M plus, it's pretty close to being meta, if not uh, up there with some of the casters. Depending where it all shakes out and if Demon Hunter gets nerfed, I wouldn't be surprised to see Demonology Warlock in some higher keys, but I guess we will see what the future holds. Uh, if you're liking the talent builds, it's on this video like i mentioned links to uh, them down below in the description as well as twitch and discord links if you'd like any add-ons we recording on the video they're all for free for you guys there on my twitch and in my discord before we end i also want to give one huge final shout out to my patrons for also part of my patreon guys like always thank you a million times uh, i really do truly appreciate it allows me keep, allows me to uh, keep doing what i'm doing for you guys making content and uh yeah just thank you for all the support if you'd like to support on patreon should be a link up here as well as down below in the description and uh yeah that is that we'll see what the future holds for demonology uh, i guess there's about a week or so till the patch hits and in between the patch and the raid maybe tuning comes if it does i will update the videos i guess comment section and pin, pin a comment there if anything changes but for the most part i think the builds are pretty much set in stone uh i mean i i'm a fan of grand warlock design demonology i'm glad ram tyranny is like not as good this tier even though the profile does fits and fights pretty well we will uh see where it goes i think locks in an okay spot and mirror still s3 and uh yeah we'll see what the future holds all that being said thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you all again soon on stream peace